Hello and welcome back to UMETSAT and welcome to the first of the weekly videos we're going to be making as part of this course. Today we are in the entrance hall of uh, our building and we're going to be looking at some of the feedback and some of the questions that you've been asking in the discussion forum and on Twitter. So let's get started. So one of the first questions was from Mo who was asking about the climate monitoring that we do. So in the video um, Christina talked about essential climate variables. What these are is a group of uh, variables, so parameters about the world that a whole bunch of people have agreed that these are important to monitor and that we should gather data sets that are able to monitor these. So sea surface temperature is one of them, um, radiation, atmospheric radiation is another. So there's a whole list of these essential climate variables. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we have as many data sets as possible to monitor these that have been properly processed. So this is a question from Mike who was asking, look, if gravity is the same all around the world, how come the uh, sea level rise isn't the same around the world? And that's because the ocean is dynamic. You've got water upwelling, water descending in other places, storms pushing water upwards, um, different temperatures which mean that uh, the water will vary with the temperature because the density of the water changes. So all of these processes mixed together give you a very unsmooth water surface which you can monitor with the altimeter. So this is a question from Dana and her kids about why when they look at the ocean colour data do they see green inland lakes and blue in the ocean surfaces. And this is due to the amount of sediment and the amount of nutrients you're having in the lake. So you can watch over the course of the year how the sediments and the nutrients change in the lake environment and in the water environment. Go as well, go have a look at where the uh, rivers enter the oceans, you'll see the variation there as well. So what we're able to do from the satellite is really monitor the health of these water bodies which is great for monitoring things like fish stocks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a question from Gillian, I hope you got your name right, about how can we monitor the surface of the ocean from space, from so far away. So what's happening is that energy, there's energy, there's thermal energy leaving the Earth's surface and the ocean surface, travelling up through the atmosphere, through space and getting to the spacecraft. The spacecraft has a kind of infrared camera on it which is monitoring that. And so that's how we can see what that temperature is. There's a really interesting thing that then happens next is how do we know that temperature that we've said, you know, this, this is 25 degrees, how do we know that's true? And so validation is incredibly important for this. People measuring with different sensors actually in situ, actually on the sea surface, on a boat, um, what is the real temperature? So we can compare that surface record with the satellite record so we know what the errors are. And that's a really important part of the scientific process. So those are some of the questions that we've picked out of the forums from this week. It's been great to see everybody who's been answering the questions and the questions coming. Do keep them coming. They're a real uh, privilege and exciting thing to see because they give us some sense of what people are learning and where, where, where we're all coming from. And it's great to see people from different experiences also sharing their experiences and asking everyone's questions. So thank you all for that.